And now let's see what these fabulous four think are the very best buys for 2000. Lizanne? Here we go. Exodus, Brocade, Verisign, Intertrust, Clear Channel, Home Depot, JDS Uniphase, Nokia, Citigroup, Veritas, Genentech, and BEA Systems. Is there a thread in that list? There is a thread. Number one, it, it, they're all relative to a one-year time horizon. I think that um, there are ideas for a longer time horizon, but these are specific for this one-year time horizon. Very much a, an internet infrastructure play, big believer in the information revolution and the power that the internet is going to bring to our economy. If you can more than double our money every year, we'll let the long term take care of itself. I hope. <laughs> John? AOL, Exodus, Microsoft, Lucent, VoiceStream Wireless, Intel, Intuit, Citigroup, Charles Schwab, and Lehman Brothers. Heavily tech, but uh, some uh, financial services in there, yes. too. Uh, if your uh, interest rate forecast is going to be right, the rates are going to come down, they'll be helped. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. John Dessar? I'm going to put 25% in Rite Aid and the 75% remaining equally divided among AT&T, Bally Total Fitness, Compaq Computer, Countrywide Credit, Diageo, Hilton Hotels, and J.C. Penney. Well, that's a more eclectic list, so tell me what, what goes into the making of that list. Uh, they're all stocks that have been beaten up pretty badly, and therefore I, my reasoning is that they have nowhere to go from here but up. Lazo. America Online, Aurora Foods. DLJ, Xerox, Sears, Disney, Icon Office Solutions, Equity Office Properties, ICN Pharmaceuticals, Compaq, iOmega, and Merrill Lynch. Now, I, I could be wrong, but as I listen to your list, I don't hear many of the high-flying Internet stocks. You did have AOL. Is this deliberate? Yes, I'm a great believer in the Internet, but I think it's got to sort itself out to see who are the winners and who are the losers, and I'm not ready to, to proclaim either category quite yet. What do you make of a move like the NASDAQ has made in the past eight weeks? Is that a sustainable upward move? Obviously not, but one of the things you have to remember is that growth money is the largest pool of money available, and the health stocks, which used to be part of the growth sector, are no longer growing. So growth managers have a smaller pond in which to fish, and that's been a big impetus in that uh, technology move. The drug stocks were conspicuously beaten down in the closing weeks of the year. Is that because of fear of Washington, or is there something else going on there? I think Washington's a specter that's going to hang over the, the, uh, the health care stocks until the election or some shortly before it. Thanks to all four of you for being such good sports. Before we close tonight, let me report one piece of sad news that occurred over the holidays. Carter Randall, one of our original panelists and a member of our Hall of Fame, passed away in Florida after a long illness at the age of 72. His steady good sense, his undaunted optimism and gentlemanly spirit, his modesty even after national celebrity arrived, make him badly missed by all of us. With the passing of Carter Randall, this world is a less civil place. And that's it for tonight. I hope you'll join us next week twice. First for our regular program, where my guest will be the incomparable Abby Joseph Cohn, and then for a very special hour-long Louis Rukeyser's 2000 Money Guide where my guests will include five of the world's most powerful executives in technology and finance, the true shapers of our future in the next millennium. Meanwhile, this has been Wall Street Week. I'm Louis Rukeyser, wishing you personally everything you deserve in 2000, plus 20%. Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser is produced